All right, happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of a Soundproof Your Studio lesson on how to soundproof a basement. So if you have a nice, wonderful basement in your house, consider yourself lucky because that is a great starting place for creating a soundproof home recording studio. So in this video, I am going to teach you a simplified method that will go through all the ways that you can start to think about how you would construct your studio. If you're a total beginner with soundproofing, this video will be a great overview and if you've been doing a lot of research already hopefully you'll pick up some new things about how I would approach building a soundproof studio in my basement if I had one. I built a soundproof studio in my backyard as you can see here so a little bit different design but a lot of the same things apply to building something inside your house as well. So before we jump in, I wanna say I have a free soundproofing course. Definitely check it out below. This will give you a ton of information on how to build a soundproof room, a soundproof studio, and I uh, can't recommend it enough. All right, let's jump in the video. <laughs> All right, so before we jump in, I wanna say, I'm gonna give a big plug to the book that taught me everything I know about soundproofing and kinda of was my guide to building my own home studio. And he has a great chapter in his book all about putting everything that you learn about soundproofing together and building a home studio in a basement. And he goes into far greater detail than I can in just a single YouTube video. So definitely check out this book by Rodger Weiss, home recording studio, build it like the pros, you know, no affiliate link to this guy. I just highly recommend this book. It's great, although it is dense. So that's why I'm here to help explain it in uh, hopefully language that we both can understand easily. So that said, definitely recommend that for you guys. Now, taking some of the stuff from that book, I'm gonna teach you a simplified way of how I might build a studio that will give you a lot of the concepts that you need to understand. So if we look at this diagram right here, this is a typical ranch home. It's 42 feet by 24 feet. It's just a big rectangle. There's some stairs coming down in the middle. Let's just say this is what your basement may look like. Granted, your basement may look like a lot of things, but just some ideas to give you some concepts so that you can apply it to your own basement. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the fact that you have a great floor for soundproofing when you work in a basement. If your basement has a cement concrete foundation, which a lot of them do, that is the best starting place because you have so much mass in that floor, you don't have to worry about sound coming up from underneath your house into your studio, which is amazing. That's great. If you were trying to build a studio in a bedroom on the second floor of your house, it's a lot harder to do. So this is a great starting place. The other great thing you have is your walls potentially are concrete or brick or stone, all of which are very massive. And this can really help with blocking the sound that's coming in from the outside walls. So another great starting point, if your basement is below grade in the earth, that's even better because you have all that ground that is acting as mass to reduce the amount of vibrations that can flow through your walls. So all of these are incredible reasons why a basement actually makes a very good starting place for a soundproof studio. The other thing that is a benefit is you are already in your house, so you could potentially tie into your existing HVAC system. We'll talk more about that later. Um, this is one of the more complicated parts of soundproofing, but having that as an option is huge compared to what I had to do where I had to have a mini split and a ventilation system and I built it all from the ground up in my backyard. So again, you have that in your favor. Now quickly, let's look at some of the cons here. One thing is that you're gonna have to deal with the fact that there's other people in your house, there's noises coming from upstairs, you don't want your studio noises to go upstairs, so you're gonna have to work extra hard to reduce the amount of noise that transfers from your studio to the upstairs and foot noise and things like that transfer transferring down into your studio. So we'll talk about that as well. That is definitely a con. The other thing that could be a con is you have to deal with your existing situation. You might have weird angles. You might have a weird space. Um, one of the biggest things is you might have really low ceilings and you definitely want to check codes because you're going to have to put a good amount of layers of drywall and build down to get your ceiling where you need it to be soundproof. And if you only have seven feet to begin with, you gotta make sure that your ceiling height is, is big enough. So that could be something that will stop you from the get-go. If you have eight foot ceilings or something like that, you should be okay. Um, and the taller the ceiling is always better. Lastly, 
Um, one thing that could be difficult is incorporating that HVAC system. When you are trying to reconfigure your HVAC system, you most likely will have to hire an HVAC specialist to help you design that, and that will cost more money. So that is both a pro and a con because you have this existing system, but reconfiguring it for your studio could be costly at the same time. All right, so let's jump into the actual design here. So what I would do if we're looking at this diagram is I would build a single room studio. That's what I did and I think it's really easy and nice. Granted, if you wanted to do multiple rooms, you can take the same concepts and apply them. It just makes things, you know, a bit more complicated. So for this example, I'm just gonna look at a single room rectangular studio on one half of this basement. So. If we look at that, the studio desk is up against the wall that is the shortest width so that we have the longest length behind us that the speakers are then sounding into that back wall. We also are gonna put in a double wall system. So you're gonna frame a new wall with a one inch air gap all the way around your studio room. And this is because we wanna create some isolation from the outside walls to the inside of our studio. And this is the best way to do it. And this is what I would recommend. And you've got plenty of space in that basement to do the double wall system. So I think it's totally worth it. On that double wall system, you are also going to install two layers of 5 8 inch drywall. This is the heaviest drywall that you can get. And with soundproofing, mass is key. We wanna create a ton of mass to block sound from coming through. As an added component, I'm a huge fan of using green glue, which is a dampening agent. If you don't know what dampening means, it's no big deal, but it's another layer that will actually help reduce the amount of sound coming through. So we're gonna put one layer of drywall up, screw it in, don't have to mud it or anything like that. Put some green glue on the back of the second layer, stick that onto the second layer of drywall and screw it in like you normally would into the studs. So you're gonna have two really fat layers of drywall. It's gonna stop that sound. And then you use acoustic caulk all around the edges of the drywall at any seams with the floor, with the ceiling, and on the edges to make sure it is airtight. Airtight is having an airtight studio is crucial for soundproofing, and that is one of the main components we're going to be looking at in this design. Our floor is good to go with the concrete. We don't have to do anything. I would recommend laying down either a laminate, a hardwood, or an engineered hardwood floor for your studio just so that it looks nice so you don't have to work on concrete. But the concrete itself is soundproof enough, so we don't really have to worry about the floor, which is really nice. Next, we have to think about our ceiling. The ceiling is the tricky part. What I would recommend doing, and what Rod Gervais also recommends doing, is beefing up the bottom of your floor. So to do this, you need to talk to a structural engineer and just make sure the load of your floor can handle more weight underneath it, and I'll explain that in a second. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take those five inch layers of drywall and you're gonna put two, maybe even three, as many as you can get away from, because remember, the more mass you have, the more likely you're gonna reduce sound from coming through your floor into your studio, which is the biggest problem with the basement studio. So we're actually gonna install the pieces of drywall with the green glue in between them underneath the rafters of your floor. So in between all of the bracing rafters, you're gonna put some 5 8 inch drywall with green glue. Below that, you're gonna put just regular old R13 insulation. This can be cheap pink insulation. You don't need rock wool. It's kind of a waste of money with this, so I would stick with the cheaper insulation. Next, we're gonna use a hat channel system on our ceiling. So you're gonna screw in IB1 clips, which you can get from the soundproofing company or any soundproofing wholesaler. And you're also going to buy 7 8 inch furring channel, which you will then clip into these isolating IB1 clips. And those clips are going to be attached to your roof rafters across your basement ceiling. And then you're going to screw the two layers of drywall with green glue, just like you did on your inside walls into your ceiling. So now you have this massive, massive ceiling. So you have two layers of 5 8 inch drywall with green glue attached to the decoupling hat channel system, which you can see right here. We did that in my studio on our peaked ceiling. Same exact system will work great for your studio. And then you're gonna have that extra, extra amount of weight to help with soundproofing even more above the insulation in between your ceiling and the floor above you in your house. So that is the crucial part and that is gonna be the tricky part as well. Sometimes you have to remove the bracing to put in the drywall and then you will replace the bracing of your floorboards when you're building that ceiling. 
Lastly, I want to talk about the door. So our door is going to be placed right by that stairwell. I think for most studios, I would just recommend doing the communicating doors. This is where you have one door on the outside, one door on the inside, and they open opposite each other. You can also create just one single really heavy door. But I think for this situation, you don't have to use as many materials. It might be slightly cheaper, um, and you just have to end up opening and closing two doors. But it works great. So you're basically going to install two solid core doors, one on the outside wall of your studio, one on the inside wall, and you're just gonna seal up around those doors with weather stripping and magnetic weather stripping to make sure that there is no air coming between either of the doors. So that is a crucial part of this. I go way more in depth on how to build a door in one of my other videos that I will link into the comments below, but I just wanted to give a brief overview of how I would do the double door system. So. That leaves us to the last part of this project, which is trying to get in hot and cold heating and cooling into your system as well as fresh air. So if you look at this next diagram, we have this system where we're gonna send in a return duct system that's gonna pull air in. It's gonna go through a soffit all the way through our wall, and then it's gonna hit the air handler, your heat pump or your furnace, whatever you have, your AC unit. The air handler is gonna push that air around. It's gonna come back into your studio and you're gonna have a few soffits and vents there where you can push in some fresh air into your room. So you've got this system where you're constantly circulating air in and out of the room. Remember this room, if you do it right, is perfectly airtight. There is literally no air transfer. So the buildup of CO2 in the room can be a problem from breathing out. So the more people you have in there, the higher CO2 levels will be. And you don't want that. It can make you sleepy. It can give you headaches. It just doesn't feel good. Having fresh air in a room is a wonderful thing. What you can do also is have just the air from the other half of your basement be pulled into the system. System. Or what I recommend is actually talking to your HVAC specialist and getting some sort of unit that can pull fresh air from the outside. There are plenty of options on the market and your HVAC specialist could help you decide on which one, but this would be an ideal option, I think, to pull in fresh air, incorporate it into your air handler system, pushing fresh air, heating and cooling into the studio and out. And that way you have the best of all worlds there with one single system. So again, to do this properly, you really should talk to an HVAC specialist and get some of the details that go beyond anything you could probably learn on your own with installing professional level heating and cooling systems. Another thing that we'll save for another video as well is how to actually size the vents for your studio but you really do want to make sure that the vents are very large so that the air is moving slowly so you don't actually hear the air flowing into your studio which would ruin the soundproofing. Lastly, those soffits that the air handler unit are gonna be going around, you're gonna do the same thing you did with your ceiling. You're actually going to put two layers of drywall around the air handler unit and suspend it around it so that you don't actually see or hear anything coming from the air handler unit into your room. So it's a continuation of that soundproofing. Again, the details of this are a little bit more specific, but I wanted this video to just be an overview so you can start to grasp how I would do this. Alternatively, I will say briefly, you could forego incorporating your existing home HVAC system, and you could actually put in a mini split system and then have some sort of ventilation system from the outside using an ERV, which is what I did in my studio. For more details on that, I will also include the link to the ventilation video I did. So this has been a brief, but hopefully somewhat informative idea of how to build a soundproof studio in your basement. Definitely check out that free soundproofing course to go even more in depth. Subscribe, like, comment below. We have a wonderful community here on YouTube where people are commenting and asking questions about how to soundproof. So join in on the conversation. I'm happy to answer questions you ha may have. Until next Monday, thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.